Hi, my name's Anna. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're having a good day and excited about getting to travel again. The pandemic will hopefully come to an end at some point and I'm sure you're itching to get back out there and travel the world. I've compiled these tips from traveling internationally throughout my life. I have anxiety and I genuinely get travel nightmares even if I'm not going anywhere, so it really helps me to prepare. If traveling in airports stress you out too, I hope some of these tips help. Let me start by saying the way that we traveled in the past might be nothing like the way we are going to travel in the future. This global pandemic has put some things on pause for the last year and regulations and requirements are changing daily. So keep updated. Know most of us have booked and canceled plans over and over and over again for the past year. In case it works out, here's where you should start. First thing you should do is go into an incognito or private window in your browser. This can help if you're checking the tickets over the span of a few days, just in case they notice an increase in interest and decide to hike up the prices to meet the demand, if you know what I mean. Once you're in your incognito window, you can check out Expedia or other price comparison website and see which airline has the best prices and deals. You can either book through that site or go straight to the airlines and book there. Even if it's not mentioned in the booking process, you should check if any visas will be required to where you're going to travel. You should also make sure that all of your travel documents are up to date and not close to expiring. Some countries will have stringent requirements on landing, so make sure you know what they are and be ready for any questions that they might have. And I know this is a hot topic right now, but depending on where you're going, you may need a vaccine passport. And this is a thing that existed long before COVID. I got one originally when I went to Africa, and it's just something that really protects you and shows that you have the vaccines and booster shots that you need before traveling. This is a vaccine passport, just a paper document, International Health Regulations 2005. It just has some basic information, says which shots you've had, they'll be stamped. I had to get one for yellow fever before going to Africa. And then, yeah, just a different section. I'm not sure what will happen. Potentially, there might be an addition in these for COVID in the future. Don't know. It's useful to have. And if you are traveling countries where specific vaccines and shots are needed, then you'll, you'll likely need to get one of these anyway. In addition to shots and vaccines, you might also need to take pills daily where you're traveling, depending on the water quality and local insects. So also when I went to Africa, I needed to take malaria pills every day. Before you take any supplements, you should definitely talk to your doctor to make sure they're okay. I used to take something called travel on before any meals that I had and that helped me be a little bit more adventurous and less worried that I might get sick. Once you've got your flight booked and the date is getting closer, then you can prepare for traveling. Besides visas and vaccines, there's also travel insurance. With travel insurance, it's better to be safe than sorry because you don't know what could happen and having it for peace of mind is a good idea. It doesn't have to be really expensive travel insurance. There's a lot of great deals online. Do your research and you can save some money. Another good thing to do before you travel is look at the city where you're going and see if they have an embassy from your country. So know where your embassy is in case of any emergencies, you'll know where to go. Another thing is to get some necessary foreign currency out if you're going to a different country, which you can get from your local post office or banks. So you don't end up stranded and confused looking for a cash machine when you arrive. You can also check if it's more favorable to get a travel card with money loaded onto it to avoid some of the extortionate exchange rates once you arrive. Have your emergency contact you details with you. Make sure you have enough data on your smartphone to get you through the trip in case you don't have Wi-Fi. If you're going to a country with a different language that you don't speak, then download a language app. I've heard good things about language apps and how they make things a lot more convenient and stress-free when traveling. Research the best forms of transportation at your destination before you arrive so you know what to do when you get to that airport to avoid stress and confusion. Next, pack your sack. Pack appropriately. Check what your baggage allowance is and measure your bag just to be sure. Find out if you're allowed a carry-on and a small bag or just a carry on. Best to check and avoid stress at the airport trying to fit a backpack into a small rolly suitcase. I've been there. It's not fun. Or worse, incur additional fees at the gate. Once you've measured your carry on items, you can go a little bit more in depth. I got a small sort of anti-theft backpack the zipper is on the inside where my back is, so it's a lot more difficult to steal things from and safer for my valuables, which isn't just good for the airport, also good when you're walking around a city. I use this in London all the time. It makes me feel a lot safer on the underground, not worrying that I'm getting pickpocketed from behind. I also have my document holder for my cards, currency, passports, and boarding pass. I like to keep at least one copy of my passport safe in here and somewhere else in my bag. 
just in case something happens to my passport. Although saying that, a copy of a passport does not make up for having an actual passport, but it will help if yours is stolen or lost while you're abroad. Also, depending on what time of year it is, you're going to want different things in winter. You're gonna want more layers in summer. You're gonna want some skin protection. I try and bring SPF 50 with me because of my ultra pale complexion and the high probability of getting burnt. Plus anti-aging and general skincare. Bring layers with you even if you're going somewhere warm, nights can be chilly, and at the very least, airplanes could be freezing. So you'll be thankful. I also always bring a beanie with me, which has a few functions. It keeps me warm, it provides a barrier between my head and the airplane seat, and I can pull it over my eyes if I want to nap on the plane. So multifunctional. I also like to bring an extra pair of comfy socks for the flight so that I can take off my shoes because your feet might swell depending on the altitude and there's a little bit better for circulation and then you can just put them over your other socks in case you want to walk around and after you land you can just take them off, fold them inside out, and wash them when you get home. I'm not going to give you a whole packing list because I don't know where you're going or what you're doing so I'm going to move on. To snacks! You should bring snacks when you're traveling. I would be wary of fruits and meats and dairies though. Look at where you're going, see if they have any specific regulations for those. Be on the safe side, make sure that you eat them before you land in case there's any sniffer dogs about. You can also bring gum or a few hard candies with you to suck on during the flight in case your ears start to pop, or to offer to a child who might be struggling with the cabin pressure. One name for it is airplane ear, and it can be incredibly painful. I personally experienced it on a long haul flight to New Zealand when I was a child, and it was agonizing. Hard candies and gum might not stop the pain, but it could help improve symptoms and even out the pressure. Also, if you have sinus problems or any head issues, the altitude and cabin pressure could cause problems, so check with your doctor ahead of time and see if they have any advice. Make sure to bring things with you that will keep your mind occupied in case of delays. Besides your phone, you can bring a book, some work, a Sudoku, or even a sketch pad. I was stuck at Gatwick Airport for around 30 hours once, and I ended up sketching for most of that time. Also, if you're on a long haul flight, you can buy and wear compression socks to reduce the possibility of getting a blood clot while on the flight and sitting still for so long. Blood clots are no joke, so take care. One last thing, don't forget to pack your patience, because you're probably going to need it. Deep breaths. Now, getting airport ready. Check-in for your flight is generally 24 hours ahead of time, so try and get on that as soon as possible. You might be able to swap seats in a better location without paying more. Also, if you're tall and need more legroom, this is a chance to upgrade to get more space so you have a comfortable flight. Window seats are great if you want an uninterrupted flight and you might not need to go to the bathroom so much. You can lean against the walls, so you'll get better sleep. Aisles are good for easy exit, bathroom use, and extra space to stretch your legs if you're taller. The middle seat would be my last choice. But if you are there, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Before traveling to the airport, you can book a car, coach, or train ticket in advance to try and get the best price. If you're booking transport at your final destination before traveling, know that it will need to be time flexible in case of unpredictable changes. When traveling to the airport, plan to arrive early in case of traffic or delays in baggage drop-off, check-in, and security lines. Some airports are more notorious than others for their lack of organization and planning. When you arrive, make sure you comply with all security measures and are respectful to airport staff. Never underestimate the power of being nice to a person at a desk. And now we're on to airport security. When I get to the airport, I like to go through security as soon as possible. There's a few shops and restaurants outside of security, but I like to get through it just in case there's delays. I don't want to miss my flight because I'm dawdling. Have all of your small toiletries ready to go, pre-packed in a see-through bag for security. Keep them near the top of your bag so they're easily accessible to take out when you get to the front of the line. And make sure they're not above the allowable limit. I remember I took a flight two weeks after those liquid laws were put in place. They threw away a lot of really good stuff because it was over the liquid limit. Sad. Bring a reusable water bottle with you to fill up after you go through security. If you fill it up before, it's fine, but you will have to down it in line, which I've done many, many times, so it's okay. At least you're hydrated. Unfortunately, not all airports have water refill stations, which they should, but they don't. In which case, you might have to buy a plastic water bottle, which isn't ideal for the environment, but it's better that you are hydrated and don't get sick and pass out. So please drink your water. Have your laptop and other large electronic devices near the top of your suitcase so they're easy to take out and put in a bin by themselves. By bin, I don't mean trash can, I mean the bins that they have on the conveyor belt going through security. 
Also with what you're wearing to the airport, I try and wear my biggest, heaviest clothes. So my heaviest shoes that are also comfortable and easy to take on and off to go through security. If you do these things, you should have a swift entrance and exit through security and be on your way. You may have to stand in one of the scanning machines like this, where they look through your body, which is not super comfortable. Just do what they say and follow the rules. They might also have to give you a pat down or scan you or your stuff. Just go with it. You do not want to get a travel ban. So I'm a bit of a nerd and I like to look up airport floor plans. I think it's the architect in me. So I know where I'm going in the airport. And especially if I have a connection flight, I will look at that airport. I will try and estimate how far it is from one gate or terminal to the other gate or terminal calculate the time that it would take me just in case my flight is delayed and then i can run if necessary to the other one to catch my flight i've had too many close calls and too many missed flights because of connections as you can see connection flights can be really stressful which also depends on the airport's rules but that's a whole nother ball game i just try and get direct flights if possible but if not Try and schedule them at least two hours apart in case of flight delays. If possible, book your connection flights with the same airline so they can book you on the next flight just in case there's delays and you miss your connection. That way you can avoid paying for a new ticket for something that might have been entirely out of your control. Also, if you have a long wait time in between your connection flights, why not try and get a one-off pass to one of the airport lounges? There's generally free food, drinks, lovely interiors, quiet calming spaces, and really nice bathrooms. I've been in them a couple times and it's pretty awesome. You can go to loungepass.com to see if they have any good deals. This isn't a sponsorship. It just seems like a really good website that will give you a pass for about 35 pounds, 50 pounds, which is awesome. So what you could spend on food and drinks while you're just meandering around the airport, you could just spend in a much nicer place and get free food and drinks, so way out your options. The lounges don't have to be for just first class passengers. Us commoners can get in on the action too. I got you. Go enjoy yourself. Sit back, relax, and have some fun. Watch a movie, have a drink. You do you. But if you're really organized and have plenty of time, why not go check out the city that you're delayed in? It's like two for one. You'll have to go through security again, but it could be an adventure. Or you can use your time to window shop at the airport and test out different perfumes, something I like to do. Or sit and have a coffee and people watch and just let the hustle and bustle of the airports go by. I like to look at all the people, couples, families, and imagine what their life is like and where they're going. Is this a common trip for them or a once in a lifetime experience? Airports can be really fun if you look out for those small treasures. There's also a great movie with Tom Hanks where he's stuck at an airport for ages and it really makes you appreciate that your two hour delays are not very long. As an architect, I hope one day I can also be involved in designing beautiful, sustainable, organized airports that are both form and beautiful function that are relaxing and fun. There are examples of refreshing airport designs popping up all over the world. They really make a point to focus on the user experience because as you might have heard me say already, maybe once or twice, airports and traveling can be stressful. And if we can design that out, That'd be great. Now we're about to get on the flight. Go to the bathroom and fill up your water bottle again 15 minutes prior to boarding. This way you can avoid waiting for the seatbelt sign to turn back off after takeoff. That process can take longer than you think. You could be sitting at the gate or taxiing for ages. In some cases, it can be vital to sit or stand near the entrance gate for when your boarding group is called. In case it's a flight that wasn't very organized with their overhead bin space, you want to make sure you get a space. You don't need to pay for your suitcase to go anywhere, or if you have delicate items in it, go in the belt of the plane. When boarding the plane, I think they should always board the back of the plane first so there's none of this trying to get around people situation when you're getting on the plane. I just think it would be more efficient, but it's not how it goes. When you get on the plane, make sure you smile and say hello to the flight attendants. They're there to help you and kindness can go a long way. They'll be more attentive to issues you might have on the flight if you are considerate and respectful. Once I even got a free ice cream because there weren't enough kids to get the ice creams and since I was nice to the flight attendants, they gave it to me. <laughs> it was awesome. You might plan on taking a nap on the flight, but there might be food and drinks, so keep one eye open on the aisle just in case something goes by you don't want to miss it. Virgin Atlantic has some pretty good food. 
before landing and before the seatbelt sign turns back on, try to go to the bathroom again. You're gonna thank me for when we get to my next step. Before we get to that step, you can join in, in a fun game that my sister and I used to play. We would count down from five and the goal was to have the plane land at exactly zero. You only had one chance to do it, but let me tell you, it was always later than we expected. If you think it's about to land, that's when you start counting down from five because the plane generally goes up a little bit and then goes down again. So it's a fun little game if you wanna try. Now, when you arrive, disembarking. Get your stuff together. Try not to get hit by any bags that might be flying out. Try not to hit anyone with your bag. You know, common courtesy. But then get off the plane. Thank the flight attendants first, obviously. But then yes, go. It's, it's go time. It's go time. This is a race and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Try and walk quickly. Not like you're walking super quick. Not like you're running, but walk quickly. You want to get ahead of everyone on your flight to the customs line because customs lines can be ridiculously long and you don't know what other flights have just landed. So even if you're like, no, it's fine. There's only 10 people ahead of me. Go faster. Go faster. Don't hurt yourself. Be safe. But also this is a race. So go. I think the longest I've waited in a customs line was like three hours. But this is also why you should go to the bathroom beforehand. You know, those bathrooms that are just before the customs lines, those are traps. Those are for rookies. You pass those, you get straight into the custom line. That is why you go to the bathroom on the flight before you land. No bladder problems in case you have to wait two hours. Sorry, I get really enthusiastic about traveling. Okay, cool. Make sure you have your arrival papers filled out because if you do this correctly, you're gonna be at the head of the line. There's gonna be no time to wait and you're going to go straight to the officers. Always bring a pen with you just in case there's extra forms that you need to fill out. Haha. -ha. You made it through. You are victorious. You can either go collect your bag or carry on through the exit and enter into this place that you were going that you were very excited about. There might be people there with signs. Who knows? It's an adventure. If this is somewhere new, grab a city map from the information desk and have them circle where you are and then tell them where you're going and have them circle that too. In case you get lost along the way and don't know the language, you can just point to the map here. Where to? How? How? Whatever, they'll get that. Then they should help you a bit. Maybe they'll draw another circle. And you're like, I'm getting closer. Couple quick tips for when you get there. If you're going out to eat, make sure the menu has prices on it so you don't get tricked and overcharged. You can also support the local community by getting a souvenir to remember your adventures. Doesn't just have to be a knickknack. It can be jewelry, a bowl, nice piece of clothing whatever. Something that will make you smile when you look at it or wear it. Or if it's something that you want to give away to someone else, that's cool too. Most of all, be glad that you made it there safely and be grateful that we can finally travel again to new and exciting places and reconnect with friends and family. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more content. And if you subscribe, make sure you let me know in the comments so that I can welcome you to the family. Be kind to each other, be kind to yourself, have a great day and safe travels. See you soon.